Hello everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Dylan Explains Everything. My name's Dylan, and in case you couldn't tell by the title, I'm the one explaining everything. In this episode, we'll be picking up a little after uh, episode 4 with 21 Pilots, and in this episode we're going to be checking out one of their songs, Chlorine, and kind of analyzing some of the lyrics of it. Um, now, I highly recommend this song. I, I love this song personally. It's one of those songs that's really gotten me to love 21 Pilots as a band. Um, and the video for it is also very well done um, as far as from a uh, filming perspective and all of that stuff. So definitely I recommend that you go check it out. And um, yeah, I think that you all would enjoy it. So we're going to be going into the lyrics and looking at um, what they mean, what they could have meant, and what I think they meant. Um and yeah, we're just going to go from there. But first off, let's get our episodic updates out of the way, starting off with our word of the day, which is anathema. Anathema. A-N-A-T-H-E-M-A. -A -E anathema. Uh, Oxford describes it as something or someone that one vehemently dislikes. Um, so if someone is your anathema, it means you hate them, basically. Um, and our trivia fact of the day is that the unicorn is the national animal of Scotland because why wouldn't it be? So let's get into like the main part of the episode here, um, going through these lyrics. So I'm not going to go through all of them necessarily, but I do believe I go through the vast majority of them at least once. Um, so we're going to start with the intro. Uh, we have a voice saying, so where are you? It's been a little while. Um, and this voice is, you know, it's part of the song. It may not be necessarily singing, but it is part of the song, so it's important we look at it. This is referencing the fact that after Blurry Face, which came out in 2015, the band took a three-year hiatus from making or publishing any music, really. Um, and during that time, like, they did go on a few tours at one point, but for a while it was just silence. And uh, during that time, like, they were releasing nothing. Nothing was happening. Everyone thought that, like, you know, this is it. Like, the band's gone or, you know, they're just taking a really long time to make this. So this is referencing that. This is referencing the long hiatus that they took. Um, then, of course, we got the opening lines, uh, sipping on straight chlorine all the way through beat as a chemical. So basically, chlorine in the song is something that's being consumed. And we find out a little later, I'll get into it a little more, but chlorine is actually a metaphor um, for music making. Um, so chlorine, if you put chlorine in your drinking water, first of all, don't do that. Um because you have to have a very small amount for it to have any beneficial anything. But it can. It can theoretically be beneficial for your health to have chlorine in your drinking water. It's just not amazing. And it could kill you if you have too much of it. Um, so, But in very small amounts, it can be beneficial. Um, so in the song, they're referencing, as I said, music making. Music making for him is helpful. But the more he does it, the more it tends to poison him almost. Um, next we get, when I leave, don't take my seat. I'll be back when it's all complete. Um, this could be referencing the hiatus. It could also be referenced to music writing in general, right? So like, you know, the fact that you have to kind of put out your stuff and then when you leave, like that that's it kind of until you release something else. You kind of have to leave everyone's life um, until you're able to release something else for them. Um, and it does kind of mirror some lines in Young Greystone that reflect where he says, in, in that aspect, where he says, um, promise me this, if I lose to myself, you won't mourn a day, and you'll move on to someone else. So that whole idea that, like, when he's done making music, or when he's not in actively making music, his fans should listen to someone else and not just get hung up on him, um, or his music. Um, verse 1 is where we start getting into some of the more, uh, metaphorical stuff, so, um, the entire verse, he's basically getting addicted to this, uh, substance that is dangerous, once again, this is music making, um, and he describes it like venom, right, so it's something that's like, almost like penetrating his body and poisoning him, uh, from the outside, um, and the, the music, or the vibrations, are actually what's being talked about here, right, so they're helpful, they help him run, um, they are what he runs on almost, but they're also a burden. Um, so, you know, he has to, well, one of the big things that people point out is 
by writing music yeah it's great because for him music is therapy like for him writing music helps him deal with a lot of like mental health problems and he's talked about that before but it also means that he has to deal with those mental health problems and that can be a big burden for him um so even though music is very helpful for him and it helps him run it's a burden he has to deal with those things in order to do it um, the refrain we start to get uh, a little more of a you know running metaphor um he's running for his life this could be in reference to the bishops which i talk about in my dylan explains 21 pilots episode it could also just be mentioning mental health issues as um in general uh and how music kind of helps him get away from that because as he said um the vibrations are what help make him run right so the music is what's helping him run for his life from these mental health issues verse two uh we've got a few different things going on so fall out of formation right so he's not conforming to music stereotypes right going back to the metaphor of chlorine is a music um is music making right so fall out of formation uh the biggest theory is that this means he's not conforming to music type stereotypes um planning his escape right he's planning his escape from the bishops from mental health problems um from things like that once again the the running metaphor is very prominent here um he's running from these problems and he's planning his escape from them now the rebel red carnations this could represent a couple things here so it could represent admiration right so red um and uh carnations they've they've kind of come to represent in this aspect uh admiration uh, which grows while tyler has mental health mental health issues right so basically um as he has more problems people admire him more right um that could be one of the meanings another theory is that it's referencing um blurry face growing which once again i talked about my explain in my um don't explain swim on pilots episode but blurry face is represented by red often and it's also a representation of his mental health issues so as blurry face grows tyler decays right so he starts to lose um so that could be what the rebel red carnations are but personally i tend to lead towards the admiration one um i don't feel like it's that far-fetched of a theory and i just feel like it makes more sense uh with the context verse three we get um he's talking about an object in his coat pockets and stuff the object he's thinking about is his headphones like almost certainly he talks about them being wrapped around his head um and in the music video he is clearly like touching his headphones and motioning to them a lot more during these parts so we're pretty sure that these are his headphones that he's talking about he mentions living on lead this is reference to pencil lead which even though it's not lead it's graphite but whatever um it also just gives some fun word play right when he says different lives i lead my body lives on lead right um the last two lines may read incorrect until said so both lead and lead are spelled l-e-a-d in these contexts and therefore if you're just reading the lyrics online you might not read them correctly um which you know i do think it's kind of weird because like i would not read it as different lives i led as in like the metal and then my body lives on a lead like the verb but whatever um the other thing is that lead is poisonous <laughs> that's a thing um but it is also helpful because obviously you can write with it and stuff um and yeah so pencil lead the reason that it's important that it's pencil lead is because that's writing he's songwriting music making for him is songwriting so he's referring once again to songwriting um and as he goes on he mentions now you double as a paper maker right well paper maker paper being money right so now music is no longer just therapy for him it is now money as well it's his income so something that was supposed to be just therapy has suddenly become how he makes money um from not only making music but from his mental health issues um so it's this internal battle of like should he really be profiting off of making money from these problems he has and even if you spin it as like well he's doing um good with something that's bad but then that's encouraging him to have those bad problems and he talks about that a little earlier on and stuff when he's talking about like you know admiration people want his music 
And in order to have his music, he needs to be struggling. So it's this internal battle of like, is struggling good for him? Um, which I think is captured really well by this song. Then we've got the chorus. So going back to the chorus, right? I know I talked about at the beginning. We're going to come back to it a little. Chlorine is music making, which, like I said, helps him and hurts him. It's this internal battle. Um, so as you listen to the song, I would recommend that you kind of think about that whenever he mentions chlorine. He's talking about music making. Um, the outro is the only part of the song without a distorted voice underneath, which I find kind of interesting. Um, the distorted voice often represents blurry face, which, as I've mentioned before, is like mental health issues and things like that. So not having it could be like he's feeling better about his mental health or those issues are like not prominent. He's he's just kind of there. He's present. And he sings this outro directly to the listener, right? Those two facts are really important. It makes it a lot more personal. There's no one else singing with him like in the rest of the song. He's just singing straight to you and he's talking to you. Uh, so he says, I'm so sorry I forgot you. Let me catch you up to speed. Once again, this calls back to the hiatus, right? So he's kind of, yeah, I doubt he literally forgot that he's like, you know, a really famous musician. But he didn't make music for so long, and he's catching us up to what's been going on with him. And he says, uh, I've been tested like the ends of a flag, a weathered flag by the sea. Um, so flags stand for something, right? This is important flags stand for something whether it just be as simple as like a country or what the country stands for or whatever but one that's weathered and broken and tethered can be seen as one that was stood for something but has been torn apart um personally i'd also like to think is like if you see a flag that's been like torn apart and stuff by like battle it means since it's still flying they won it means that they've endured through all this like pain and all this um wear and tear and I think that that might be a little closer to what he's getting at here is like he has endured through this time. He's endured through these problems. And now he's catching us up to speed on them. Um, there's many theories for the final lines. Um, the can you build my house from pieces? I'm just a chemical. So some people um, think he's referring to himself as a chemical, right? So he's small and minute. Um, and he's basically like, crying out for someone to like build his house build his home to to kind of like be there for him and take care of him um personally i don't know if that one's necessarily the most like plausible it is possible that like he's singing and he's saying i'm just a chemical like i'm so small and minute and he's singing out to god because he does um he is open about the fact that he's a christian and he sings a lot about god in other songs so i could see that some people think it's sung by ned to tyler um, possibly saying like, you know, can you, can you build me a home? Right. So in the music video, Ned is like this alien and they are filling up a pool with basically pure chlorine, uh, as a home for Ned. So it's possibly Ned singing and like, Hey, can you build my house? Can you build me a place to stay, um, from the chlorine? Um, I'm not so sure it's that either, just because I feel like that wouldn't be very prominent in the song. Like, there wouldn't be a huge reason for that. Um, and, you know, I just don't see that being the only reason. Um, obviously, there is the biblical reference of, like, him kind of uh, calling out to God and building his house and stuff um, on the, the whole story about, like, the person who built their house on sand, the person who built their house on stone. And so he's kind of calling out to God, like, can you build my house? I think that's definitely plausible and possible, but my personal theory is that it's the music and emotions singing to him. And obviously this isn't, I'm not set in stone with this theory, but it's something that I've thought about. Um, it's possible that like the music is singing to him and saying, we're just chemicals, right? So when you listen to music, literally it's just chemicals in your brain going off because they hear sound. Um, and metaphorically, the chemicals have been represented throughout the song, right? Tyler's music writing is chemicals. Um, and they need a house, right? The lyrics, the song, they need something that, that to be built for them, for them to live, for them to fill. And so it's Tyler's job to actually write those lyrics and write the song so that they can live in it. That's just my theory, though. Um, and I feel like it makes sense in the context of the song, but I'm definitely not, like, married to the theory, so... Um, let me know what you think about that. 
in the comments and please listen to the song if you haven't yet and you just listen to me talk about it for a while that'd be really awkward i do think this episode would have made a lot more sense to you if you had listened to it um yeah so i'd recommend you do that and then re-listen to this episode uh so anyways in in conclusion it's one of the best songs ever in my opinion um especially by 21 pilots in general very deep meaning a very personal battle and you know just pretty catchy um so upcoming here we've got um an episode where we've got dylan explains plot and story structures um so i'll be going over different like ways that you structure stories and stuff um and then i will be reading a story i'm not quite sure what it is yet i normally don't until the day that i record it so you know that's cool and then after that my analysis episode will be why phineas and ferb worked as a tv show um so please look forward to that and be sure to tell your uh, your friends your family your couch cushions all about don't explains everything and uh, share it around and subscribe follow um turn on your notifications so that you can get uh, notified whenever i upload these um every saturday at noon and yeah just uh thank you for listening my name's dylan and i explain everything <laughs>